A Slim Good Body production. Good morning, class. Good, Good morning, morning, Mrs. Peterson. Peterson. Today we'll be talking about making decisions. Yes, Peter. What kind of decisions? Oh, all kinds. Big ones and small ones. Who can tell me a decision they've already made today? I decided what clothes to wear to school. I had to choose a snack to bring to school, and I chose an apple instead of a candy bar because it's healthier. Excuse me, Mrs. Peterson. But my mom packs my snacks, so I don't get a chance to choose. That's a good point. Not everyone gets to make the same kind of decisions. Did you get to decide something else? Yes. My dad asked me what I wanted for breakfast, and I chose eggs. Knowing how to make a good decision is an important life skill, and I have a video from our friend Slim Goodbody, who will help us to learn more about it. Who wants to see it? Me. I do. Throughout your life, you'll be making thousands and thousands, maybe millions of decisions. So it would be a good idea right now to decide to become a better decision maker. Now, even though the kinds of decisions you make and the problems you face may be very different at times, still, there are four basic steps you can follow in almost any situation. Step one, stop. Step two, think. Step three, act. Step four, review. Stop, think, act, review. For each of these steps, here's what to do. Step number one, stop. Don't rush, don't hurry. There's no need to make a choice with lightning speed. Remind yourself before you act, you need to think about the facts. Now, before you make a decision about how to handle a problem, stop and state the problem to yourself as clearly as possible. For example, my problem is that it's late and I only have an hour before bed. What should I do with my time? After you've stated the problem, it's on to step number two. Think. For each decision you might make, there's more than one path you could take. To help decide which path to choose, ask what's to gain and what's to lose. There is more than one way to solve most problems. For example, I have an hour, so I could watch TV or I could finish my homework. To help you make a good decision, you need to think about the consequences of each choice. Now that means what will probably happen if you make one choice or the other. What's to gain and what's to lose. What will happen if I watch TV and what will happen if I do my homework? What is most important to me? If I do my homework and miss the TV show, I'll feel a little sad tonight. If I don't do my homework, I'll feel really bad tomorrow in school, and I also might not sleep so well tonight. Once you've figured out the possible choices and their consequences, it's time for step three. Act. Now, once you've chosen what to do, that is the time to see it through. You made the choice you thought was best. Now act and put it to the test. Now that you've stated the problem and thought about the possible choices, you're ready to make the actual decision and act upon it. So go ahead. I think it would be a better choice to finish my homework. So that's what I'll do. Then it's on to step four, review. You stopped, you listened, you thought it through and did the thing you chose to do. This is the time when you review if this result seems good to you. Now, reviewing what happens gives you the chance to see if you made a good choice. I'm really glad I chose to do my homework. I felt better in class, especially when the teacher called on me. But I still want to know what was on television, so I'll ask Marty to tell me about it at lunch. Reviewing also gives you information that can help you if you're faced with a similar situation in the future. Next time, I'll do my homework earlier, so I have time for television. Now let's go over the four steps one more time. Step one, stop. Step two, 
think. Step three, act. Step four, review. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Slim. For the next class, I would like you to make a report about what it takes to make good decisions. Class dismissed. Who would like to go first? We, we would. would. Okay, Bradley and Sam. We figured that most kids don't really think about consequences very much. Most of the time, it seems easier to just do something and not think it through. But you can't make a good decision if you don't think about what it is that you want to happen. So we thought up an example to share with the class. Imagine you had a problem like this. Suppose your best friend ignores you at school. You could choose to speak up right away in front of the other kids, or you could choose to wait until you're alone and tell him how you feel. What would happen if you made different choices? If Bradley speaks up right away, his friend will probably be embarrassed and won't listen. If Bradley waits and talks to his friend alone, then Bradley may be upset and angry for hours. Mrs. P, what should Bradley do? Decisions aren't always easy. It depends upon your goals. And to tell us more about that, here's Slim Goodbody again. Mrs. Peterson can't decide what Bradley should do. Bradley must choose for himself. It's his choice to make. Now, if there's time enough, he could ask Mrs. Peterson or someone else he trusts for their opinion. But in the end, no one can decide for him. And that is true for all of us. So, before making an important decision, you need to think about your goals, how you want the situation to end up. Knowing your goal is an extremely helpful part of good decision making. Goals give you direction. They help you find your way. Now, depending on his goal, Bradley would make different choices. If his goal is to get his feelings known then and there, he might speak right up. But if his goal is to have time and privacy to really talk things through his friends, he might call his friend after school. The truth is that sometimes choices can be very, very hard to make, especially when you have to say no to a friend. Now, for example, suppose you have a friend who wants you to do something dangerous and unhealthy, like playing by a railroad track or smoking a cigarette. Now, even though I am sure you would make the healthy choice and say no, you still might have the goal to stay friends. So what can you do? Here are a few things you can try. Say no firmly, but give a reason that lets your friend know you still care about him or her. For example, No, I really like playing with you, but I don't want to do something bad for my body. Or, No, that's dangerous, and I like you too much to see you get hurt. Another thing you can try is suggesting something else to do instead. For example... Why don't we play on the computer or go for a bike ride? Or you can use humor. For example... Oh, you want to take a risk, huh? I challenge you to a race around the block. Or are you too afraid of the risk of losing? Of course, if none of these things work and your friend still bugs you to do something you don't want to do, you might need to make a decision to leave. But even then, if your goal is to stay friends, you can try something like this. No, I don't want to hurt myself, and I don't want to see you get hurt either, so I'm going to go right now. If you change your mind, give me a call. Learning to make good decisions takes practice, and sometimes it may be hard, but it's an important life skill that will help you stay healthy your whole life long. Life Skills 101, we're here to learn and have Fun. Discovering what can be done that's good for you and me. Life Skills 101, a class that's great for everyone. So take a seat, we 